Your work is incredibly sharply funny, but it's also really difficult. What were you like as a child? I was, I was actually uh, a very nervous kid um, and uh, I think a pretty observant kid. And like lots of kids, I enjoyed making things, but I really had no aspirations at all, at all, towards becoming an artist. So that was something that took me totally by surprise and happened much later in my life. So what was it like for you and your parents to go through the process of actually making accent elimination? Uh, it was sometimes like a very strange form of family therapy. And I, I often think that footage of us sitting with our coach looks a little bit like a strange form of family therapy. We've got this stranger who's trying to sort of explain us to one another. And um, accent elimination, take two. It was one of the mind, most mind-bogglingly difficult things to learn that any of the three of us have ever tried to learn. It's very psychological to work with your voice. Your voice comes out of you and it's kind of part of your body in that sense, but it's also something that's very hard to learn how to control. And it's very, very strange to learn to speak like someone who you know very well, but at the same time, you know, I, I couldn't quite access their voices. I, I have uh, hands that look like my mom's and, you know, a lot of my mom's facial features and my dad's coloring, but somehow their accents were in this other place of something that, like, I couldn't quite access. And so um, that was in large part what also inspired the project, how you, how you work with something that's so close to yourself and literally part of yourself that at the same time is very, very distant. To me, your work is almost a Don Quixotean quest. Do you see yourself in pursuit of the unattainable? Sorry, I was just changing. Um, so I guess I don't think that most things are unattainable. I think that uh, I, I like to uh, work a lot with situations that originate in the everyday. And so um, if anything, most things in the everyday we assume are a little bit um, too attainable or maybe a attained without much interest along the way. So I'm sort of interested in finding situations where um, we have to um, think more carefully about what's underfoot and think more carefully about what we're not looking at or noticing a lot of the time. I, I guess I agree that it often feels like a quest, but I think I'm often engaged in a quest that's very much of the everyday and perhaps arguably the attainable um, the, the boring things that surround us are much more interesting to me. How do you feel about the state of the world right now? Um, I think we're rapidly headed towards a really bad situation. Um, and I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I've been more depressed than ever about the, the temperament and the fractiousness and the just, just really disconcerting state of affairs in this country. So we better get it figured out really fast. <laughs> Did the importance or the cultural meaning of the work change for you when it was shown at the Armenian Pavilion at the Venice Biennale? It was a really great experience to get to show accent elimination in Venice. And in part because, of course, it was a very meaningful year. It was the 100-year anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. And I was in a show where all of the Armenians were kind of Armenians like me, which, which means diasporic sometimes part, sometimes full <laughs> Armenians. It was in a strange way like some kind of family reunion. All these people kind of looked like my relatives. <laughs> but I really enjoy showing accent elimination in the US, in part because I also think that my story is a very typically American story of having parents from two different places who, um, who meet under <laughs> unlikely circumstances. And um, I just happen to have sort of weird ingredients in my family, but it's, it's a very typical American story that is also told in Excellent Elimination. So improvisation is actually really important to a lot of the things that I do, and I'm often trying to um, think about ways to play, but also think about ways to play very seriously. So um, there's a lot of projects that I start where I don't know exactly what I'm doing, and I have to make it up as I go, but at the same time, just being whimsical and just being spontaneous is really not enough to yield a good project. And so it is always a combination of trying to combine play with rigor and to not shut anything out and to take what I'm doing and do it 200% seriously, no matter how absurd it may seem to be at the beginning.